am pornit spre orfelinatul Sheldrake. Am bă. Mai mai încolo puțin. Ouțe. Căutăm matatul. Numărul 24 de la CBD duce la orfelinatul de animaluțe. Am alergat o grămadă. Doar și prinde busuri. Sunt peste tot busuri. Și acum încercăm să găsim stația. Am prins busul într-un final și mi iau un nouț. Mambo! Egg! Egg, please! Egg! Un ouț la 70 de bani cu salată. Ora, ora, ora. Ora, ora, ora. este la 11, se poate vizita doar o oră pe zi, de la 11 la 12 și trebuie neapărat programare online. online. Mail, dat mail înainte și văzut când are liber. Nu ne-au zis că pe 8, 9 sau 10 putem veni, am ales astăzi și plecăm spre ei. Băgăm 2 km aproximativ pe jos, căutăm să vedem pe unde e. Cam așa ceva, un kilometru și ceva, un kilometru Bine, după, după cea din Nairobi, să ascultăm puțin liniștea naturii. În dreapta este un național park și mai avem puțin de mers până la orphanage, orfelinatul de animaluțe. Salvate, care rămân fără părinți sau părinții sunt prăduiți de alte wild animals și rămân singuri, vin aici și sunt îngrijiți bine până își revin și sunt eliberați din nou în sălbăticii. Ai ceva să zici față de domnul Sheldrake care a murit? Domnul Sheldrake a fost un mare iubitor de animale, a fost chiar fondatorul Parcului Național Tsavo East. După moartea lui, în 1977, Soția a fondat acest orfelinat de animale. L-a fondat din cauza că zicea, dacă animalele astea ne-au adus bani, e timpul și noi să... Nu? Să dăm, să dăm ceva înapoi și ajută tot felul de animale cu probleme. Le ia, le îngrijește, le ține. Femeia a murit în 2018 și da. acum tot orfelinatul îl conduce fata lor, nu? Fata lor, da. A primit chiar și un premiu de la o distinție de la regina Angliei, Elisabeta II, pentru toată activitatea pe care o face. A făcut-o și o face în continuare și ca ei. Deci familia Sheldrake deține acest orfelinat. Sheldrake, în față. 
timp, când am plecat din Nairobi, credeam că nu ajungem, că era foarte departe. 9 și 20, e fix 10 și 20, suntem la poartă. Am schimbat două mațeatul, am mers pe jos de kilometri. Și cum ziceam, vizita este permisă doar între orele 11 și 12. Am ceva de negră, are mai multe amestea. Are foarte multă lume cu tururi, câțiva care au venit pe jos ca și noi și trebuie să plătim 30 de dolari intrarea, după 3000. Proiect făcut din donații din 1977. Și de, și de asemenea se pot adopta elefanți sau rinoceri. Adoptăm și un elefant și un rinocer, nu? Da. Dacă tot am venit până aici. O grămadă de vizitatori azi. Guck mal, ein ganz kleines. Das ist goldig. Das ist das goldig. Das ist ja so goldig. Yeah, attention everybody. I'd like to take this opportunity and welcome you all 
of the Sheldrake Wildlife Trust and will kindly request you to try and maintain silence for the period that we're going to be here so that we can be able to see these baby elephants and also to hear more about them. If the elephants come next to the line where you are, you are allowed to touch and take some photos. And while touching them, make sure that you don't put your hands in the mouth. And this is because of the elephants of good teeth. Also while touching them, make sure that you don't feed them on any kind of food that might be carried on you. And also don't hold the branches for them because we don't want the elephants to get used to everybody as a friend who can give them food. And this will help them to have an easier time to go back into the world when it is time ready. And if the elephants are next to the line where you are, you also advise to make sure that you keep standing up. And this is because if you squat down or sit down, some of them see you as a toy to play with. So they might want to come and push and kick as they do with the soccer ball. But if you keep standing up, they will give you a lot of respect. And if you've got a mobile phone on you, you're advised to use it only for taking photos and not for communication. Because everyone talking on their phones will be making noise for all the rest. And lastly, everybody is advised to make sure that you keep your masks on for the entire period that we shall be here. Thank you and welcome at the Sheldrick Wildlife Trust. This is a project that was started officially back in the year 1977, after the death of David Sheldrick, who was a naturalist and the senior found warden of the Lakes of National Park. He died in 1977, and this project was started in his memory, under the management of the widow who is now the late Dr. Dame Daphne Sheldrick, who's been running the project since then, until about four years ago, when she passed on, leaving the mandate to her daughter, Angela Sheldrick, who was running the project together with the mother for about 17 years before the mother passed on. And right now, the project is under the management of Angela Sheldrick, the daughter, we are taking care of often baby elephants and often baby rhinos and later on reintroducing them back into the world. And that is why all the babies you're going to see here today are orphans. We rescued them from different parts of the country and they have different reasons for being orphans. Some of them, we know what has caused them to be left orphans and that's why we rescued them. Others, we are really not very sure. But since the others were found when they were still at a very young age, at an age where they would not have survived without the mother's milk, and also without protection against other dangers, that's why we had to come in and help rescue them. A young elephant will need the mother's milk for the first two years minimum. And this means they happen to lose the mothers when they're below two. They will not survive. They can easily starve to death or can be attacked and killed by the lions or the hyenas out there. So that is why we have to come in so that we can help rescue them and raise them here in the nursery for approximately three years. Any time between the age of three and four, we will start to reintroduce all the elephants back into the wild. We necessarily don't take them where we found them but we'll always reintroduce them to Savo East National Park in Kibwezi Forest. The process of reintroducing them is done gradually. We do have three reintroduction units. Two are based within Savo East National Park and one is based within Kibwezi Forest. We have our keepers at these units that we lead the orphans out to the park, ensuring that they are free in a wild environment interacting with different groups of wild elephants of their choices on daily basis, being directed at our units every evening. But after a long period of doing this, often get invited and adapted in these groups of wild elephants. Once they get adapted, wild elephants will train them, will protect them, 
will warn them against human beings, will show them everything within the park, and they will have become as wild as any other elephant in that wild herd. When they get adopted, our orphans decide not to come back at our units. They want to stay with their new wild friends. And when we see that happen, we can say we've achieved our target. Our main target here is to rescue them since they were found orphans and read them and later on reintroducing them back into the world. That process of reintroducing them takes quite a long time. It takes a minimum of about five years. And it takes a long time because it depends on the different characters of different elephants. It depends on the reasons that have caused them to be left orphans. It also depends on their age when they became orphans. It also depends on the fact that elephants will always stay in groups and families. And that is why strangers are not just divided anyhow in our herd of all elephants. And that is why our keepers have to stay with them until the time they will be adopted. And once they all get adopted, they will set them free and let them become wild once again. Just to remind everybody, you're not allowed to hold the branches for them. You're not allowed to feed these elephants on any kind of food, please. So right now, we've got a total of 22 elephants that will be coming before us. And the, two, the 22 will be coming in two groups. And right now, we've got a group of 10 elephants. And after a few minutes, the 10 will walk away so that we can get another group of 12, slightly older than what we've got now. They all have names. We've named them after the place that we've rescued them, or reasons that have caused them to be left often. So that's how we can easily tell them apart. I will mention the names one by one, plus their approximate age. And I say approximate because we were really not there when they were born, and so could not tell their exact age. But there are a number of things we look at to give our approximation. And since most of them come in when they're still very young, it is very easy to tell. And that is why the difference between their real age and our approximate age is very minor. Maybe a month or two might be the difference if there is any. I will start with the elephant on my left. Her name is Sagateza. She's about three years old, though small in size compared to her age. She was rescued from some conservation area and she's a starvation victim because of drought. In the course of last year, towards the end, we had a long period of drought, causing lots of other animals dying out there, including female elephants who had young ones. And in most cases, the females who have young ones will die fast and leave the babies behind. Since the mothers are starving and the babies rely on the mother's milk alone, so the baby keeps on circling the mother, but the mother does not have milk. And that's why the mothers end up dying and leaving the babies behind. She's healing well. We only need to give her longer time before she gets back to normal. Now she goes into a seizure after several months compared to frequent seizures on daily basis. We expect her to get back to normal before she goes back into the world. Walking at the edge of the water hole is taboo who is about one and a half years old, who was rescued from Sava Conservation Area, Matata Ranch, and a starvation victim from this area. The mother believed to have died from starvation due to drought, and that's why Tabu was left alone. Dusting herself at the far end next to the keeper is an elephant by the name Camille, who is two years old, who was rescued from Sava Conservation Area, and a starvation victim. Behind Camille is Choka, second youngest in the nursery, 15 month old, having been rescued from Sava conservation area and a starvation victim. Choka was found standing next to the dead body of the mother, the mother who had starved to death and the baby left behind. And that's why we rescued Choka. And lastly, at the far end is Tingai, who is two years old, who was rescued from Saburu, who is a victim of human wildlife conflict found with a spear wound in the back, which is believed to have been caused by human beings. And that's why we rescued Tingai. So that is the first group of 10 elephants. In a few minutes from now, the 10 will walk away. 
so that we can get in another group of 12 elephants slightly older than what you can see now. Generally, different reasons have caused all these babies to be left orphans. And human wildlife conflict is the first major reason that has caused most of them to be left orphans. Human wildlife conflict is a big problem in our country. This is a problem because there is always an increase in the population of human beings compared to the space or size of land. This has caused human beings to fight for space and water with wild animals, causing conflicts every now and then. So that is why migratory routes of wild animals no longer exist, have been occupied by people. Buffer zones along the parks and the conservation areas have been occupied by people. And that's why if the animals want to move from one area to another, they're not able to do it. They'll encounter the crops and the structures. And the owners will always want to fight them. In the course of the fight, there's always the babies that will suffer most. The babies will suffer most because they will have been separated from the rest of the family members and left alone at an age where they would not have survived without the mother's milk and also without protection against other dangers. And that is why, if identified, we are conducted and have to fly out immediately to go and help rescue them from wherever part of the country that they will have been identified. And that is why human wildlife conflict is the first major reason that has caused most of these babies to be left orphans and therefore brought here in the nursery. Ivory poaching is another reason that has caused a few of them to be left orphans. And I say a few of them because for the last three years, the trend of poaching in Kenya has dropped, which is a good thing, which we hope, pray and believe that the drop continues until there will be no poaching in the long run. But unfortunately, a few of them have come in because the mothers were killed and the tasks were taken off from them. And I say unfortunately because the act of poaching is being perfected by human beings. And yet, it is our role as human beings to care and protect for these animals. As human beings, we fail in this role by causing them to be left orphans just because we are interested in their ivory. And an elephant ivory adds no value to human life. And that is why I would like to urge all of you who are here today to help stop poaching. You can help stop poaching if you want. And this is right from your home and right from your country. And I say this because the end products from ivory are being sold from all over the world. So right from your home, you can help make a change by ensuring that you don't buy anything that comes from ivory or from the rhino horn by ensuring that you spread the word to all your friends and relatives and colleagues not to buy anything that comes from ivory or from the rhino horn. We don't have a market that wants the need to continue killing the elephants, which means the elephants will be left to die from a natural death, what we all expect to happen to us as well. So that is why ivory poaching is one of the reasons that has caused a few of them to be left orphans and brought here in the nursery. Some of the babies were found falling down wells, falling down manholes, gotten stuck in the mud, washed down the rivers during the heavy rainfalls, and the mothers were nowhere to help rescue them. And a few of them are orphans from natural reasons. By natural reasons I mean the mothers have died from old age, from natural diseases, and from starvation back into the world. But just very few of them are often for natural reasons. The majority of them, the reasons for being orphans are human related in one way or the other. And that is why it is important that as human beings, we have to come in and make sure that we give them a second chance to survive back into the world. In addition to taking care of the baby elephants and rhinos, the Sheldrick Wilder Trust has got other projects that they undertake. For example, they do have, we do have mobile veterinary units. In these mobile veterinary units, we go around the parks looking for naturally injured animals, treating them and just setting them free to continue with their own natural life. This is not necessarily on elephants and rhinos alone. 
It is with any other wild animals that have been found out there with any health problems. Once identified, we are conducted. And our mobile veterinary unit will either fly to the scene or drive to the scene to help treat them and immediately set them free to continue their own natural life after treatment. We also have anti-poaching teams, and these teams are mostly based in South. Finish having the bottles. If there are any questions from any direction, you are free to ask. You just raise up your hand and shout your question if there is any, one at a time. Elephants can grow up to about nine feet high, up to about. Come again. How? They can grow up to about nine feet high, up to about six tons weight. These are still babies, and that's why you see them young or small. That's why you see them small because they're still babies. Yes. We start the process of releasing them back into the wild any time between three and four, but it takes them five years or more in Savo before they fully get adapted in a herd of wild elephants. So by the time they are 10 years, they have become wild. We monitor them for the first five years before they get adopted in a herd of wild elephants where our keepers will follow them physically every day and lead them back at our units every evening. But when they join wild herds of their choices, we don't track them, we don't microchip them because we don't want to interfere with the natural life. But they do visit our units in Savo after several years out in the world. And most of the females will always come back to show the newborn wild babies. So from that, we get to know how they're doing. Yes. 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 Elephants in the world are always in a group or in a family. And that is one of the reasons why it takes five years or more before orphans get invited in these hard wild elephants. They need that longer time of seeing one another, communicating and making friends. And because elephants are very clever and intelligent, and they also social animals, they get to understand our orphans before they invite them in their families. So in the long run, they'll all be adopted in different groups of wild hearts of their choices. Yes. Kind of the, the, the population of elephants in Kenya is 36,000 plus in Kenya. purpose of the ears. The ears play a big role. First of all, when they flap the ears wide out, they look big and they scare the other animals. And also, uh, when they keep on flapping the ears, it helps them to cool themselves. So they act as their radiators as well. The 
size of a newborn elephant varies from one elephant to the other depending on the family genes. But they weigh between 80 to 100 kilos. Some are bigger in size, some are smaller in size. So that depends on the genes of the newborn. Leah, Leah, her name is Olorian. She's approximately two and a half years. She was rescued from the Masemara and she was identified all alone within the park at the age of about six months. Without her mother and without the rest of the family members, we could not tell exactly what happened and that's why we rescued her. And because we understand that that egg, they cannot survive without the mother's milk. That's why it was important that she was rescued. In front of Olivia is Bondeni, who is about three years old, but small in size compared to his age. Bondeni was rescued from Sava Conservation Area within the Cholo Hills National Park. His age and size can easily be attacked and killed by the lions. That's why there was need for Rama to be rescued. On my right is a Soit two years old, rescued from Sava Conservation Area, Tulu Hills, found together with a mother who had a shattered leg from a natural injury out in the world. Next to Esuit is Lorigo, also one of the latest arrivals, having been rescued from Lakitia, Lois Sabarai, and a victim of human wildlife conflict. In front of Lorigo is Kinye, at three years old, Aunt Kinye was rescued from the Masamara. She was identified all alone at the age of about a few days old, without a sign of other elephants next to her. And that's why we rescued Aunt Kinye. Right now, she's approximately oh, yeah. three years old. And so far, <laughs> are doing all right in the nursery. I've always said she's a lucky elephant to be alive. And this is because immediately after she had been rescued, a pride of lions, mice from the same spot. So she was lucky not to have been identified by these lions. And that's why she's still alive at the moment. At the far end is Old Depe, at three years old, next to the keeper. And Old Depe was rescued from Amboseli National Park. He was identified all alone within the park, without the rest of the family members. Nobody knew where the family members were. Observed for some time so that he's not attacked by the lions. But still, no other heart was interested in him, which meant that he was an orphan. And at that age, he could not have survived without protection against other dangers. That's why we rescued him. And lastly, next to Old Depe is an elephant called Suguroi, who is approximately two and a half, almost three years old, who was rescued from Laikipia Elkarama Ranch was found standing next to the dead body of the mother. The mother was believed to have died from a natural disease. And that's why the baby was left alone. For approximately 10 years, that's why any time between the age of 60 and 70, or the teeth worn out, you will die from starvation, which is a natural death. Elephants will have to be maturity no? while at the age of between 10 to 15 years, starting with the females. The gestation period of an elephant is approximately two years exactly 22 to 24 months. We'll always stay in groups and families under the leadership of the oldest female, who by natural instinct automatically become the leader or the major of the group. The boys will leave the families after maturity, which is above 15 years. And when the boys leave the families, they want to go and find a bachelor hut somewhere else. Some boys want to go and stay by themselves. Or some boys want to go and look for females in other huts at a different place while the females will stay together for the rest of their lives. Generally, elephants are very clever, very intelligent animals. They also do have a perfect memory, which means they will remember everything that happens in their lives. And that is why the saying that goes, elephants never forget, is very, very true. In the beginning, I mentioned that we take care of baby elephants and rhinos. And so we do have one rhino in the nursery. His name is Maxwell. He's a black rhino. He's 16 years old. And he's blind. Rescued from Nairobi National Park. Born blind. Rejected by the mother because he was blind at three months. And that's why we rescued him. Try to fix his eyes with a surgery so that we can set him free back on the wall when he can see. But this surgery never succeeded. 
later on who is found to be genetic blindness. He does not have an optic nerve and so cannot be fit with an operation. This means he cannot go back into the world. And he can't go back because the very solitarian territory he goes out and need to fight for his territory. But he turns his opponents, so he's totally disadvantaged. The others will listen to fight and kill him when they're fighting for territory. And that is why we decided to stay with him for all his life. And black rhinos will live for approximately 35, 40 years. He's only 16 years at the moment. We've constructed a bigger stockade for him and provided everything in his nature. He's comfortable being alone. We don't allow the public close to this stockade because a lot of noise makes him scared. And others are away all the time after mm -hmm. the people have left. And that is, which is not good. So that is the reason to why we are not able to see him. And lastly, he might be interested in supporting the work that is being done by the Shoah Bikwara Trust. Yes, you're welcome. There are different ways you can help do this. One of the ways is by adopting all sorts of analytical industry. To adopt an elephant, you pay a minimum fee of 50 US dollars a year or 5,000 Kenya shillings a year. And once you pay this fee, you will have help to serve the life of an elephant that would have died back into the world. And once you pay this fee, we will give you a certificate to the name of the elephant that you will have adopted. You can also get a special watercolor painting, which is done by Angela Sheldon. You can also get a picture and profile of your elephant, including a newsletter. Then you fill in a form, giving us a detailed class email address. So that every month, we update you and let you know how your elephant is doing class or the other thing you've got in the national. If you adopt an elephant, only a 50 US dollars a year. We also date you the keeper diary, which is written every day by different people, telling different stories from different authors. And all that will be brought to your monthly basis online. You can adopt an elephant for yourself, or you can do it as a gift for a friend. And if you do it as a gift, it is a gift for simply that will receive the updates every month. But if you do it for yourself, it's you that will receive the updates every month. So until after one year, we'll let you know so that you can decide if you want to renew it again or not. So that is why it is important that after you've seen all the babies that have come before you, you make a choice of which one that you want to help support. And on your way out, we do have the forms for you to fill in so that you can get a certificate in the name of your elephant and walk back home a very lucky parent to a baby elephant. This will also ensure that the project continues to save more that would have died because something wrong has happened to the mothers. And if you don't have the time to do it right away or if you don't want to do it right today, you can pick some information on the table on your way out, which is got a website. When you get back at home, you can go on a website, see all the elephants we've got, and still help support the project by adopting an elephant online. Any final questions? So if there are no more questions, uh, the elephants are left with approximately 10 minutes or less to walk away. That's the end of our viewing. Thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you for visiting the Short Ritwala Trust and enjoy the rest of your safari.
rinocerul are 16 ani și este orb, s-a născut orb. Hai să adoptăm rinocerul, să rog. Rinocerul, orb. da. Un rinocer și un elefanțel. Un elefanțel. Au 22 de elefanți la acest orfelinat și în Kenya au spus că sunt 36.000 de, de elefanți. Încă. Încă. Sunt ceva. Sunt ceva, da. Ca să adopți un elefant, plătești 50 de dolari pe an. Pe an. Și, și primești update-uri cu el, ai să faci un cont, să faci un cont la ei pe site și primești update-uri, poze în fiecare lună profilul tău cu elefanțelul. Și chiar și o pictură. Da, chiar și o pictură. Deci adoptăm două elefanței. Adică un elefant și, și un, un rinocer. Și poate facem și un cadou cuiva. Da. <laughs> Am plecat înapoi. Da. Că zis, am că s-au obișnuit. În fiecare zi vin la Lăptic la ora 11, o oră de Lăptic de jucat pe aici, până o pleacă. Programul de dimineață, de am sunt pui. Și se duc înapoi, în sălbăticie. Toți au până în 3 ani. Ca să poată să fie independenți și să trăiască în sălbăticie, trebuie să aibă minim 3 ani. Iar ca să se adapteze în sălbăticie, le trebuie până la 5 ani. Deci de-abia când au 10 ani, pot trăi în sălbăticie independenți. Și timp de 5 ani sunt monitorizați tot timpul. Merg după ei, văd dacă se adaptează, dacă i-a adoptat vreo... Turma de elefanți. O, o familie. O familie, da. E foarte frumos locul. Dacă aveți copii, chiar merită să veniți cu ei aici. Prind o lecție foarte bună. Fiecare are povestea lui, dar îi puteți găsi și pe site-ul lor oficial. Puteți citi despre ei și puteți adopta. Pe care îl adoptăm. Hai să citim despre ei. Yeah, okay. That's great, yeah. She adopted from me. Uh, yeah, yeah. Adopted. And you've been getting all the updates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Completezi un formular. Plătești 50 de dolari. Și ai elefanțelul tău. Sheldrick Wildlife Trust Organization. .org Astea sunt elefanței. Am adoptat Rino și un elefanțel. Știi ce am ne-au dat diploma? Care e pe 12 aprilie născut. L-au găsit în Masai Mara. Era singură, de fapt era singură, că e o femelă și la momentul când l-au descoperit avea trei săgeți în corpul ei. Așa. Asta din cauza oamenilor, bineînțeles. Da. A, oricum a trecut peste trauma din trecut și acum este independentă și tăcută. Olorien. Olorien. A, from Olorien place, nu? A, exact. Dați în Masai Mara. Ia, Masai Mara. Că tot n-am fost la Masai Mara, dar adoptăm un elefanțel de acolo. Oricum, cred că bănuți se duc pentru toți elefanței.
Mika fotografie. Ah, è primito adesso. Come si sente? Posteri, non c'è rotto. Maxwell. 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 Și pictura. Care se va duce cadou către cineva. Te e 8 martie către maica ta și maica mea. Da. Adoptat. Îi avem la dosar. Pe rinocer și pe Orion. Olorien. Olorien. Olorien, așa se numește locul de unde l-au găsit. Fiecare elefanțel are un nume cu locul de unde a fost salvat. Și la data salvării, nu, la data când a venit la orfelinat, avea doar 13, 13 luni. Porci, uite cum sta, mistreții. Mm. În față, ți-a plăcut? Foarte Ai pus mâna pe ei? Te-ai jucat cu ei? Neapărat, dacă ajungeți prin Nairobi, dați o fugă până la Sheldrick Orphanage. Și nu uitați, în primul rând, să adoptați unul. Dacă nu vreți să o faceți fizic din Nairobi, puteți să o faceți online. Și să nu uităm de acești porcușori care stau aici, o familie de porcușori mici. Oh. Mm -hmm.